Look at that. It's like slow motion. Yeah. Not a fan. Not a fan. Cold. Yeah, this is actually a hybrid. Um, Check it out. It's actually, the motor up front is what mainly drives it, and then we actually have a Tesla swap <laughs> under the back seat. Like under it. the back seat, so. Follow the cord. Yep. And it is actually plugged in. <laughs> What's happening guys? We are still in the garage, leaving off from the last video from the first startup. I'm still super hyped. But a lot of you guys have been asking for me to do a video on battery relocate, so this is basically what is gonna happen. Okay, so you have the factory lead from the batter, from the harness, and it comes with like a loop that went on the battery with one of those like secure down bolts. So we basically just cut it and are using the terminal section of it. And we're using a, just a terminal post that we're just mounting to the frame rail here. And the factory ground, so you don't have to hook this up to anything because the harness is already grounded right here. So this is just a lead to go to the battery. So we're gonna lop this off here and just let it ground itself to the chassis. And basically what we're gonna do is, just to play it safe, um, we have this aftermarket fuse holder here for like a stereo system and putting like a hundred, gonna put like a hundred amp fuse in there. And then basically what we got is a super long run of some nice four gauge wire. And we got like 18 feet of it. And some ring terminals, black and red, right here. And basically what we're gonna do is mount the positive right here in the engine bay this will already be grounded to the chassis, and then we're just gonna find an area on the firewall, which we'll show you guys when we find it, um, to run the wire through. And then basically what we do is run it through the firewall into the car and drop it down here. And then you're gonna wanna kick up all your kick panels and run that wire straight through all the way back to the back of the car. And then you're gonna run it to your desired location. Basically what you gotta do is when you put the battery in the trunk, you're just gonna run your positive feed to that and then take a jumper for a ground and ground the battery to the chassis. Now the correct way would be to get a battery box of some sort and have a vent on it and vent it down so that it gets it out of the car. Um, for right now until we get the box, I think what I'm gonna do is take the factory tray that was up in the engine bay, take this thing off, um, and put this tray in the trunk and bolt it down that way so that way it's the size of the battery. And then I'm gonna make my own strap uh, to go over the battery and hold it in place. So that way everything's out of the engine bay and good to go. It's fairly simple. Um, it's just simple nuts and bolts, some wire, and making sure you got solid grounds. When you're grounding anything, you gotta make sure you have you know some sanded off paint and get a good connection so you don't have any connection issues. And like I said, I don't know if the fusible link is needed because the factory one already has it right here in the fuse box, but it's just a precautionary measure um, just to play it safe in case anything shorts out from the backside. Going up to the front, it'll pop that fuse uh, before it does the one in the fuse box. So I've got my boy Jeff here still, and we're gonna be tackling this, so let's get at it. All right, guys, got the trunk uh, backing out for the back seats. Uh, true street car, you know, Dynamat. Just comfy ride, spare tire, you know, deal. So we got our power wire. Just let some extra slack. I think I'm gonna mount the battery right here on this side. Um, and then we're running straight through the back of this so that we can tuck it underneath the seat. And Jeff is routing it. All through here, you can see it's running with the factory harness and he's gonna run it straight through up there and then we're gonna find a spot in the firewall where we can poke through. And it looks like we're gonna have way more than enough wire. So, looks good. We'll let you know when we find a spot here and show you where to go. Okay, so we went through the firewall down the here. Uh, it's basically right where the, what is that Jeff? Like where the main harness is? 
down there, you see there's a rubber grommet on the firewall, like right back in the, the right side behind the shop tower down there, the rubber grommet. So I'm gonna route it through behind the fuel cell and probably bring it up around here and down just so it's out of the way and tucked. And that's, I mean, that's really it. I mean, there's not really much to it. Um, we'll get it all routed and hooked up and we'll show you guys the end product. But this was 18 feet and we still got plenty in the back for the battery. I could even mount it on this side if I wanted to probably, but we're gonna go right here and uh, we'll show you how we do that. All right guys, jump to two days later. Busy with work and stuff. Got my man Corey back in the house. And basically what we did so far is we mounted this terminal post down here and we got the power wire for the stock harness and the battery relocate wire. All hooked up up here, run to the back where we have the battery. And what we did was, and there's not much light in here, uh, we have a fuse, 100 amp fuse uh, in here with the power wire. I'm gonna mount that, but basically we're here, battery hookup will go here and then ground here to the chassis. So the issue is right now is that all I have right now is these little ring terminals. I need the actual battery terminals to make that work, but we just got done bleeding the brakes and the clutch. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, you can find yourself very frustrated really fast if you don't know this. So when all the lines are out and draining, when you take a motor out or do whatever, all the fluid for the clutch drains out. Now the clutch shares the same reservoir as the brake and you'll notice there's a max line, but when you open that, there's a little slit at the top of the ring when you pour fluid in. It's like right in this area. Basically you have to overfill the brake reservoir to allow fluid to go into a separate chamber for the clutch line. Um, and you have to rebuild all the pressure in the clutch lines and then bleed the clutch as well. Um, so brakes are bled, good to go. Clutch is bled, good to go. And we're about to pop the wheels back on and get ready to drop this thing on the ground. I'm gonna do a cut on the wastegate screamer pipe um, so that that's cut while it's up in the air. And then I think I'm gonna rig up the battery and fire this thing up for Corey because he hasn't heard it in person yet. But uh, yeah, the battery relocate is going good. Basically what we're gonna do is create a strap to go over the battery to secure it. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna say, you need something to vent the battery. I got it. I got a battery box that I'm gonna be uh, getting that has a vent on it, but I wanna get it hooked up for now so I can get the car running and do what I need to do. It's not gonna be a long period of time. It'd be very short. And then I'll switch over to the box. But for now, it's just to get the car up and running. Um, but like I said, guys, it's very simple to do this battery relocate. There's not a lot that goes into it. I'm putting a fuse. Um, generally, the rule of thumb is about 18 inches or so from the battery. You want to have a fusible link. Um, and we just went with a 100 amp fuse. I also have 150 if I need to swap it out, if it trips it, which it shouldn't. But it's basically to trip it so that the wire doesn't burn up through the car if anything were to short out in the battery side. So uh, we're going to keep cruising along. Um, to get this thing as close to on the ground as we can. Uh, I'm gonna cut that wastegate screamer pipe probably like right now and deburr it so it's good to go. Put the wheels on and I think we're like right there, dude, dropping it on the ground. Three weeks, not a bad feat, dude. Working full time. Yeah, working full time, coming here, spending late nights. It's come so far and I know a lot of you guys are super pumped from the last video. I've been getting hit up by a bunch of people. It's, it's awesome to see something you know, as drastic as we did come to life in such a short period of time. I mean, dude, it's been like three weeks since we got the motor. So yeah. it's it's been absolutely crazy. It's been like a whirlwind. Um, I'm definitely excited. So we're gonna finish up a couple things and we'll show you guys um, what we got here in a little bit. All right, guys, so here's what I came up with here. So we still had the, the battery ground that was hooked up up, up front um with the terminal end on it so i hooked it up and ran it to a ground in the car 
And then for now we just had the uh, this alligator clip holding our power on just to see if it was all hooked up and working. And it does work, you know, lights come on in the car and it starts up. We just started it real quick. Corey's under the car, we just got the drive shaft all hooked up. He's just torquing him down. Hey oh, hey right here, Mr. Feets. Uh, so once he's done, just torquing down the bolts down there for the drive shaft, we are literally clear to drop this thing back on the ground and get ready to start buttoning up the, the front end. <laughs> We're basically done at this point. I am working on uh, getting a hold of somebody semi-local with an all-wheel drive dyno, and we are going to try and tune on the dyno to try to pull some numbers so we can see what this thing actually puts down because a lot of people are already asking what does the speed six make i'm like i literally just finished it i don't know i've never even you know put it in gear and roll it out so we got to get it moving under its own power check over some things and see where see where we end up got a couple odds and end things that i that i want to do before we start um doing anything crazy we got to dial in the 93 map and all that stuff we're going to finish up the drive shaft bolts get this thing on the ground and kind of start the car for you guys again and show you everything maybe try to roll it forward and backward on its own on its own power that'd be sick and then we got to clear out this huge mess of stuff we got here and figure out where we go from there but i plan on having this thing driving by this weekend so just a couple more things. All right, boys. Legendary moment here. Bringing her down on her feet. Damn. Oh, I forgot how low it is. Oh, Lord. Look at how much easier it is to work on things. Yeah, dude. Damn. Look at it. In all its glory. That's awesome. We'll have to jack it up again, obviously, to put the bumper on, but holy crap, dude. So much room for activities. How much different? It's crazy. Dude, it's I posted up on Instagram a picture of like before I even painted the engine bay to now, and it's like that's a yeah. ins <laughs> insane yeah. difference. That's oh nice. my gosh. Mainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mainly the uh, hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Precision Turbo. But uh, yeah, we say we started up for him. I yep. mean, like oh, should we should we move it? Just, uh, just a little forward and backward. A little little forward backward action. Might as well. Might as well do it. Hey, did you show him that you're officially now a hybrid plug-in? Yeah, this is actually a hybrid. Um, Check it out. It's actually the motor up front is what mainly drives it, and then we actually have. Uh, Tesla swap <laughs> under the back seat. Like under the back seat. So follow the cord. Yep. And it is actually plugged in. I need my key. Small details. No big Small deal. Small details. We will worry about it. <laughs> but make it a problem. It becomes a problem. Here we go. So deep that the tone changed like super deep now it's it's dude it's like literally the perfect tone it is it is it's, it's awesome like especially when you get on it too like I can't I can't even imagine what it's gonna sound like under like a load you know oh my god feel
but my buddy that had the original car took this clutch down to Knoxville, Tennessee, and there's a clutch shop there that actually reworked that clutch. Really? And bench tested it at 650 foot pounds of torque. Oh Lord. This one, it's it, like it engages right off the floor. Like there's no room for error. Like it's as soon as you start lifting the pedal, it's, it's grabbing. No sh. It's, that's why I was like, oh crap. Nice, but, nice. Well, guys, it's on the ground, and we are that much closer to driving it. We're gonna stop there for the night. It's late. We got the battery relocate pretty much done. The only thing I gotta go do is get a um, battery post terminal for back here and we'll be good to go. But she moves under her own power and I'm freaking stoked. Dude, it's gonna be nuts. Nutso. Oh, hey, we opened the garage and it was snowing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. there's that. <laughs> Ever so slightly. Look at that. It's like slow motion. Yeah. Not a fan. Not a fan. Cold. But that's where we're going to leave it. I hope you guys enjoyed the battery relocate. I know a lot of you guys were asking about that. And you got to hear it again and a couple revs. And we're right there, boys. We just, just got to put the bumper on now. Put the bumper on and check over just a couple more things just to be absolutely sure. Drive around the parking lot a little bit and should be good to go to start sending some data logs and start making our way downtown, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next episode. We're probably going to be driving it and uh, get you guys a first drive with this thing. So definitely stay tuned. Until next time, we will see you later. Peace.